from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering ScienceLogic Symposium 2019. Brought to you by ScienceLogic. I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE's exclusive coverage of ScienceLogic Symposium 2019 here at the Ritz-Carlton in Washington, D.C. Happy to welcome to the program a first-time guest off the keynote stage this morning, Bailey Zetto, who is the Vice President of Customer and Seller Experience IT at Cisco. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right, so Bailey, I've actually, uh, you know, I've watched and partnered and worked with Cisco my entire career but you actually changed my view of something about Cisco's in your keynote this morning. And that's, you know, you said that 99% of Cisco's $50 billion plus is transacted online, so I should be thinking of you more as like Amazon.com, uh, you know, than as, you know, the networking giant that I've known my entire career. Well, it's certainly true that most of our revenue comes through our online presence, but it's perhaps in a different manner than what you're thinking, right? So obviously, we do, do do some business direct and we might have some stragglers selling, buying something with a credit card, but that's not the bulk of our business. The bulk of our business is through primarily partners, resellers, and when I say online, I meant B2B yeah. transactions. No, no, I, I, I totally understand, yes. Bailey, and what, what I love is you're in Cisco IT. That's right. Um, and therefore, we're not going to talk about a lot of the networking pieces. We're going to talk about what runs Cisco's business and you have the pieces and you know client success and support and all those run and even I didn't even realize the the employee engagement all runs through you know Cisco.com. That's right. Uh, and, and I love you did a nice little video, gave all, all those that have been in the industry, you kind of go through and look at the history of like, oh okay, there's the HTML stuff I used to code That's right. back That's in right. the 90s through all of the updates and uh, yeah, we, we definitely. I was just uh, expecting the little triangle with the guy like shelving dirt under construction, you know, <laughs> to show up, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, 404. Uh, That's right. That's found. right. That's I, I know, right. Uh, if I go to Cisco.com slash go slash product name, <laughs> That's right. Usually was a shortcut to get me uh, to some of the things I, I, I care about. But uh, give for, for those people that, that you know weren't here for the keynote or might not know as much, give us a little bit about you know your purview and kind of the scale, scale and uh, scope of what you do. Yeah. So at Cisco, uh, I'm in I'm in Cisco IT, but I'm responsible for supporting all of the revenue generation portions of the company. So that specifically marketing and what they do, sales and what sales does. Uh, Cisco Services is a very big, very big part of our company, so I support the services organization. And most recently, uh, Cisco has been on a journey to really kind of uh, move from a once and done hardware sales motion to a full reoccurring revenue type of stream. So we've stood up a whole customer success motion, and so I run the IT portions of that as well. And last but not least, you heard me mention that 85% uh, of our revenue actually comes through our partners. Right. So I support all the systems that our partners interact, at, uh, interact with as well. Yeah, uh, it's interesting actually. So we, we've done theCUBE at Cisco Live the last two years. Sure. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a observation I made a year ago when I started going to that show. And it was, you know, if I'm a networking person, but this applies to you know, most people in IT. I used to manage stuff I could touch and go, I understand where it is and how I touch and everything. Now, a lot of what I have to deal with is outside of my purview and therefore I need to get into that environment, um, kind of pair that with you know, companies like yourself that are acquisitive uh, and so you, you have lots of change going on and lots of things that are in your environment there. So we know change is the only constant in our industry. Without a doubt, um, yeah. So you know, maybe give us a little bit of the, those dynamics and how that impact uh, what, what's happening in your world. Yeah, so I mean, uh, we talked a bit about my responsibilities and one of them is Cisco.com. Yeah. Uh, it's probably one of the more important uh, platforms I'm responsible for. Uh, from an IT perspective. But uh, I also mentioned that Cisco is a very, uh, uh, we grow through acquisitions a lot. It's one of our basic business strategies. And so every time we buy a company, it's, it's a big rush to kind of take that acquired company and integrate their online presence into Cisco.com, right? So once a company is acquired, we don't want uh, people to think of, think of it as a separate company both from a kind of marketing perspective, but more importantly, we're actually integrating that product into, uh, into our Cisco ecosystem as well. So just having to move all that uh, technology into Cisco.com is certainly a big job. But I think you're maybe asking this from a different perspective as well, which is to say, okay, you know, new technology is in, in being introduced all the, all the time. 
And while it makes sense from a company portfolio perspective, I think as a former IT person, you're going to agree with me, it makes our jobs a little bit more difficult. It's both a blessing and a curse, right? From the perspective, it's a blessing in that we get this great new technology to incorporate and use in our running of the business, but it also adds a lot of complexity. And so it's pretty important that we uh, have both the systems and processes to be able to manage all of that complexity in, in, our, uh, in, our, in our infrastructure, really. All right, so infrastructure monitoring yes. is something you spent a lot of time talking about. I, I guess I'll, I'll set it up. When, when I talk to my friends in the networking space these days, or a lot of it, um, the joke is if you say single pane of glass, they're going to spell it P-A-I-N, <laughs> um, because we understand that there is not one tool to rule them all. Right. Yes, you know, I might have a primary piece, but you know, in the virtualization world, I had to plug into vCenter. You know, Cisco has, you, know, you laid out a broad portfolio of various tools up and down and across the stack from you know, security down to physical and you know, right. upper layer and plus all the acquisitions. So can you lay out a little bit as to you know, where science logic fits and th there's a number of Cisco's tooling that that integrates in with. Yeah, uh, so when I talked about our journey with science logic, uh, you know, Cisco of course has a number of, of tools and capabilities to take care of the pieces that we are known for, for example, uh, application Dynamics is a great company that we bought and provides great insight into application health. But uh, obviously in the network perspective, right, we have cloud management software, security software, that type of thing. And so um, I think what we realized in Cisco IT, what my team realized is that it really isn't about a single system to rule them all. It's about trying to find multiple uh, platforms that could work together uh, and really share data as to drive richer insights. And so I think uh, maybe the industry has been on a bit of a wrong path to think it's, you know, it's not Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all or whatever, right? It's about being able to use multiple applications but having the right data insights move around as needed so that depending on your lens or your role in IT, whether you're a network guy or an application guy, that you're going to use the tool that's more, most natural to yourself, but pulling in the right amount of data from those other parts to be able to get the right insight. Yeah, uh, if I saw your, your closing slide uh, mirrored the theme we've seen at the show of superheroes. So the superpower everybody needs in IT today is how do I leverage my data? And we understand that it probably takes more like the Avengers uh, to be able to put those together because data is everywhere. Yeah, the funny thing is that that wasn't actually a uh, set theme. I think, we, I think we must all have Avengers on our mind because everyone independently came up with the superhero concept. Yeah, yeah no, no spoilers on Endgame that's here, right, That's right, that's right, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, excellent, so uh, you know, can, can you just bring us inside uh, some, some of that science logic journey? Uh, my understanding, you, you know, you're probably the largest enterprise deployment of it, so you know, we always love to talk about scale and what that means and how, how it's been in your, uh, your viewpoint. Yeah, um, you know, we actually, before science logic, uh, we actually had our own system that uh, Cisco IT wrote. Right, and so you know, as as IT professionals, we always think we we could do it better than anyone else. But we've reached a point where just so much technology and so much complexity came to the market that we really wanted to find a solution that uh, that would really kind of enable us to to grow into the future with all the things that are happening. Right, whether you're talking about virtualization with containers or uh, you know, cloud native applications or multi-cloud. These are all technology trends that have made our jobs in IT incredibly complex. And so we started to look for what could we replace our homegrown monitoring platform with. And uh, ultimately we decided that ScienceLogic was uh, the best fit for us. Uh, and since we've deployed it, uh, we, uh, as with most, th most things, we tend to uh, stretch the scale, especially with our vendors, and so I think we are the largest science logic uh, enterprise customer at this point. Uh, but we are seeing uh, incredible benefits in terms of being able to connect science logic's infrastructure monitoring with uh, our own application dynamics and really marry the two for those insightful uh, bits that we get from both. All right, uh, so one of the big theme discussion here is that, that journey towards AI ops. Yes. Uh, 
while we speak, actually, right now, I've got a team in Mountain View that is at the DevNet Create Show, uh, which Cisco helped organize. Sure. Uh, we're doing two days of interviews there, and you know, DevSecOps is you know, probably well, you know, one of the key topics they're going to be talking about. Uh, in your keynote this morning, I heard IT ops uh, in a discussion there. So bring us inside a little bit organizationally, you know, what you're seeing, you know, your, your viewpoint on these various trends that are you know, helping to modernize and you know, transform operations. Yeah, I think from an operations organization standpoint, um, you're going to see the applications team and the infrastructure team work even closer together. Um, you know, maybe one of the things I didn't really make super clear in my keynote this morning is I actually work on kind of the app side of the house, right? I'm the direct interface to the business. Uh, and um, as such, I actually don't interface with ScienceLogic directly, yeah. but I'm a strong partner with my infrastructure team, who I think they're all sitting over there, that do run ScienceLogic, right? And so in today's world, you really can't just say, oh, this is an infra problem, they're going to deal with it. Because of that really big mix of, well, is it an infrastructure problem? Is it an application health problem? And a lot of times it's both. And so the organizationally, it might be two separate organizations, but the need to work together is even, you know, greater today than ever before. Oh my, right? you're, you're preaching the choir. I mean, I, when, when, we, when we launched virtualization and then later when containers came around, there was the nirvana that, oh, I'm going to have some unit of infrastructure where the application people just don't need to worry about it. Right. You know, serverless from its name seems right. to imply that. Exactly. Uh, but we understand that eventually, you know, there's networking, there's storage, there's compute all underneath uh, these kind of things. That's it's right. just repackaging. So, you know, the application's important. You know, I'm a long time infrastructure guy. That's so right. The, 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 the number one rule is the reason we are here is to run that application and make sure your data, you know, gets where it needs to be. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're not here just to power That's things. That's right. Right? And I just <laughs> realize I probably would get in trouble if I said it's actually the application infrastructure and of course the network all has to work together. Yeah, well th 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 that's a given. Can, can you just, we, we talked a little bit about app dynamics, uh, you know, when I think about Cisco, you know, broad portfolio, you know, the, the SD-WAN, the, the ACI, uh, how do some of those fit into this discussion? Are there tie-ins with what ScienceLogic is doing? It absolutely does, so as I talked about it, when we talked about that, collection of superheroes, it's not, it's not a single superhero, it's not a duo either, it's really a big team, it's the Avengers, right? And so when you think about Cisco's portfolio, we have a lot of uh, additional components needed to provide that modern operating, IT operating platform, right? So we talked about a lot about app collection dynamics, we talked about science logic, but what Cisco brings to the mix is things like ACI, titration, uh, policy enforcement, multi-cloud management. So all of those things, again, have to work together like the vendors do to provide that, that modern platform. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned multi-cloud, and I know in your, your keynote you talked a little bit about AWS and, and GCP. That's right. How, how's cloud changing things in your world? It absolutely is. Again, it's, it's, I'll go back to the, it's both a blessing and a curse, right? The blessing is uh, enormous capability that we get from the cloud, enormous flexibility. Uh, as an example, using Cisco.com as an example, uh, we host a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of public information about our products and websites and, that's, and data sheets and that type of thing on Cisco.com. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we decided we're going to refresh the engagement of Cisco.com. We wanted to make it much more personalized. We wanted to incorporate video. Those are all great things, but the moment you try to throw video, and guess what? Native video, whether it be in English or French or Chinese or Japanese, depending on where you are, well that put an enormous strain on our infrastructure. And if you had to travel, if the, if the packets had to travel from Japan to the United States to our data center, that would slow things down. So we took advantage of public cloud to really kind of push out the content to the edges so that we could get localized content as close to the uh, customer as, as possible. That's the great thing about it, but again, the management of that, increasing complexity, right? So both a blessing and a curse. Uh, AWS GCP, we are using um, for uh, doing a lot of video streaming work. And so again, great capabilities from that platform as well. 
All right, so uh, you know, we saw this week uh, a lot of announcements of uh, some of the integrations. Uh, ServiceNow and AppDynamics were two of the ones that highlighted that I think impacted you. Uh, any, anything from the announcements that particularly excited you? And uh, you know, I guess final on that, is there, there anything roadmap wise that you know, you'd be looking directionally uh, for, for this space to evolve towards? Yeah, I think uh, I was excited to see, and in fact that's one of the main reasons why we chose ScienceLogic in the first place was the quality and um, amount of integrations that they have, right? And so we're also a big uh, ServiceNow customer and we see the benefits of uh, automatically open cases in ServiceNow when ScienceLogic detects an issue as an example, right? Um, and I would say going forward, we'll be looking uh, to either have out of the box or if needed, you know, Cisco IT will build something, even more integrations with the Cisco products. We already have AppDynamics, but as I mentioned, we have a lot of other uh, components that are critical to the network. And so we'll be looking for tighter integration and all this to drive really, uh, drive data together so that we can get to what I think what most people at this conference are hoping to achieve, which is really driving towards automation and AI ops, right? And so that's really the desire, for, I think, for everyone attending this conference. It's certainly our desire in, in Cisco IT. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to working with ScienceLogic to, to building out that roadmap. Yeah, uh, so I guess f final question for you. you. You talked about that, that automation. Where, where are you when it comes to, we, we, we look at um, you know, things like machine learning uh, and automation, which if you listen to the analyst that spoke this morning, is like you want to make sure you separate those things. That's right. We, we understand, you know, any of us that have done process and operations is, you know, you could automate a really bad process that's and right. that's not a good thing. That's right. So where are you along that journey? What are you seeing? You know, what, what are the barriers uh, that, that keep us from uh, kind of their nirvana where, you know, oh geez, I, I could actually just seal off the data center and, uh, you know, let everything run. Right, I think, uh, it's, meant, it's funny, you mentioned Cisco Live, so I actually uh, present on a topic of uh, AI on, on, at Cisco Live as well. So the, what, uh, what this other speaker talked about really hit home with me, understanding what is AI really? Because I think there's a general perception in the press that it's like this magical fairy dust you can just sprinkle on everything and it like makes everything perfect, right? Uh, AI is really good at pattern recognition but uh, you still need to put some checkpoints and really uh, have human beings kind of check the work of, of AI, right? And so, uh, you know, we actually have seen uh, uh, data center outages, not Cisco, but in the press, yeah. when AI runs amok, right? And so I think the first step of automation, that's a given. We want to do that, but that involves a lot of human beings kind of looking at the data and deciding, okay, these sequence of events can be cured by this set of automation. AI ops is a, something that's a whole different thing if you follow the, the definition of AI to say, okay, let the computer do it all on its own. Um, well, I don't think we're there yet. I think we have a ways to go. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't want to trust our you know, multi-billion dollar business to AI ops at this point in time. Well, uh, Bailey, there's, a, there's an event we did a couple of years ago with a couple of professors from MIT that are uh, really th th forward lo looking on this, and they say it's racing with the machines um, because people plus machines will always do better yes. than people alone or machines alone, um, and hopefully that keeps some of us that are a little bit worried about the Skynets of the world taking over uh, from, from getting a little bit too paranoid. On I it, totally so. agree with that statement. In fact, the quote that jumps in my head is better together, yeah. and I'll close with, Science logic, app dynamics, better together. People, AI, better together. All right, well, well Bailey, since you if, if ended it on a perfect quote there, thank you so much for joining. I hope to see you at uh, Cisco Live San Diego. Fantastic, my pleasure. All right, and uh, thank you so much for watching theCUBE as always. I'm Stu Miniman here at ScienceLogic 2019 in Washington, D.C.